This is a community conversation. We're going to be talking about gun safety and more. One of the reasons why David and I are here to talk about this today is we want to let people know that this is actually a, a great way to bond with family and friends, and, and uh, it's a safe sport. Hello, my name is Doug Odishu. Uh, I'm here with Dave Lyman. I'd like the viewership just to know a little bit about um, my background, um, and then you can go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. um, I did become sh uh, shooting at the age of three is when I started. I come from Lyman Orchards, Lyman Meadow Golf Course over in Middlefield, which the viewing area probably knows about, and what was the Lyman Gun Sight Corporation. In 1976, I won the British Junior National Championship, and in 1981 and 82, I won the national championship uh, in this country. I co have coached India uh, Olympic teams on four separate occasions. I used to coach the U.S. wheelchair shooting team for eight years. I coached them. We went to Seoul, Korea, and participated in the Paralympics there. And most of my time now is spent at the range teaching firearm safety to youth and to adults. I do very little competitive shooting now on my own. Uh, my wife, uh, we were married in Alaska. Uh, I was going to college in Alaska on a shooting scholarship. She was captain of the rifle team um, and married her in Alaska and then moved her back down here. If you ask her who the better shooter is, she'll tell you she is. If you ask me who the better shooter is, I'll tell you I am. So um, it just depends who you uh, ask. Um, after 14 years of marriage, um, we had our first and only child and named him Remington, mm -hmm. which obviously goes with the whole scenario of everything. Mm -hmm. But um, So it, it's been a great life for me. Um, and again, it all stems around the safety aspect of it. There's no other sport um, that is more respected and more controlled um, and more safety oriented than the shooting sports. And I think, you know, the viewership really needs to understand that, um, that you know, and, and I'm not unique. Um, there's millions of people all over the country that do the same thing I do. Um, that teach the same thing, that feel the same way that I do. So I started shooting at the age of five. My father was a police officer, introduced me to, to firearms and uh, told me uh, all the safety rules and it's always stuck with me. Uh, had guns my whole life, uh, went into the military, got back into the shooting sports, uh, just being an avid uh, uh, collector and shooter, gunsmith. I own Delta Arsenal that's in Wallingford. Early 2000, uh, 99, somewhere in there. Got into becoming a counselor, uh, instructor. I was a military law enforcement uh, instructor. Just been really pushing the sports hard lately and, and trying to get it out to as many people as possible because it's a passion of mine. So we're going to talk about uh, youth and gun safety right now. Uh, Dave, do you want to start that off? Yeah, I would. I think uh, youth and gun safety is probably at the beginning of a topic of gun safety in general. Um, I think every child, very early age, um, decides he or she want to play with a firearm, especially with video games nowadays. Uh, they're being exposed to more and more firearms on video games. And I feel very strongly um, that at a very early age, you should at least expose your children to the use of firearms in a very safe manner. And we started our son, Remington Lyman, at the age of three. Um, by the age of five, he was telling adults how they should be handling the firearms um, when, when the adult would have a, a lapse in memory. And he's gone through his life uh, knowing this, and all of his friends, and, and we, we coach uh, between 250 and 300 kids uh, during the winter season uh, every year uh, on gun safety. Um, once they learn gun safety, you never have to worry about um, them ever again around firearms. Um, usually in the media when you hear about the negative part of firearms uh, being used with youth, um, it's because the youth hasn't been exposed um, to firearms at an early age. Um, and they have an interest and they want to know what happens, what kind of sound it makes, um, what kind of uh, you know, recoil it has. Um, and if they, they're taught that at a very early age and exposed to that, you'll never have to worry about them from then on. I agree with you. Uh, I started at the age of five, and uh, those safety rules that my father taught me have stuck with me my whole life. Um, I've noticed people that have never been around firearms, first thing they do, pick up the firearm, put their finger on the trigger, and squeeze it without even knowing anything about it, and that's where you hear some of the bad negativity about uh, accidents with firearms. The, the shooting sports and, the, and firearm safety uh, is something that every 
child should be exposed to. Children, when they're exposed to firearm safety, uh, learn respect. Um, they learn the knowledge of firearm safety. In the shooting sports where they're uh, doing an activity of a, of a competition, um, they learn concentration. We find that a lot of kids that have a difficult time focusing in school uh, when they come to the range because they have to focus through that little sight on a gun and they have to get their mind to hold the gun steady and to perform to shoot an accurate shot. Um, that teaches that little guy upstairs in the mind concentration. And after a few months of that, when they go uh, into school, the teachers and the parents say, geez, what's happened to Johnny? He's concentrating in school. And it all stems back to the firearms and firearm safety. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And that's where people are like, how can you teach kids firearms and all that? But it does help them set those fundamentals for their life, too, along with shooting. I think uh, throughout their life after that, it helped me uh, when I was younger and helped me focus and, and be patient and all that when it came to certain types of shooting uh, sports. Yeah, you know, Doug, there's, there's millions and millions of kids learning firearm safety in 4-H programs, in junior rifle club programs, uh, in uh, CAP programs, um, national, you know, uh, youth National Guard programs, millions and millions of kids learning about them. And unfortunately, we only hear about the negative ones. Uh, we learn about the kids that, um, you know, got into trouble with firearms. And 99.9% .9 of those kids um, have never had exposure to a firearm safety class, a firearm safety program. Uh, if someone was going to get into the program and want to teach their kids, how do you help promote that? Well, I think you need, you need to look in your, your area, surrounding area, see mm -hmm. if there's any clubs, any youth organizations um, that they can get into. Um, and if there is, definitely join them. Um, if there's not, you know, you probably have got a grandfather somewhere along the line or a neighbor that's been in the shooting sports. Um, get them to take the, the child to the range. Um, teach them the proper uh, etiquette of ranges and the firearm safety. Um, and that's how you get into it. Uh, here in Connecticut, we have 18 high schools that have shooting teams. They travel all over the state of Connecticut, just like a football team, just like a soccer team, and they compete against other schools. Through our range, we send many, many shooters to colleges. Um, there's over 600 colleges in the country that offer shooting scholarships. Uh, my son Remington is a senior at Ohio State University. He's on a full four-year scholarship because of his shooting ability. Now, I'm not saying every child out there or every youth uh, can get that way, but many people out there in the, in the media world um, have no idea that there's even shooting scholarships in college. And it's not a sport like football and basketball where everybody's trying to get a, a scholarship. Mm. Shooting is a wide open sport. Wow, I didn't know that. And uh, <laughs> I have a wrench too, <laughs> so wow, I didn't know that, geez. Um, we notice, yeah, it's a, it's a relative or someone that brings in uh, their child, and, and we allow them to shoot on the range. It's just um, We just make sure that the safety's there, and the safety's there and all that, then we don't have an issue with it. Yeah, shooting is a really a family-oriented sport. Mm -hmm. Young and old, big, small, um, doesn't matter whether you have hair on your head or don't right. have hair on your head, you can shoot and you can shoot just as good as anybody else. Um, and so that's what makes our sport very unique, uh, what makes firearms usage very unique, because grandpa or the father who is in the military and comes back and um, can teach their son or daughter about firearms and the correct usage of firearms. And this happens all throughout the country all the time. Mm -hmm. So have you seen a rise uh, recently in your range uh, with more youth programs or uh, I'm seeing a rise more in women than in, in youth. Yeah, I mean, in, because we concentrate so much on the youth programs, um, we have seen a rise, especially in the high school area. Um, many of the high school shooters uh, are trying to go into the military. Um, they see military activity on TV all the time. Um, we see a lot of interest in females. Uh, in the shooting sports, females make better shooters than the males do. Agreed. Scientific fact. Yep, agreed. Um, <laughs> so, um, so we see that interest. And, of course, 
you know, once you get the youth involved, then the parents become involved. And um, as you have you seen the, the 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 mothers and fathers getting their pistol permits and going through that. Yeah, I definitely seen where uh, someone in the family gets it, and then like, oh, you got to try this, and then they all come in and shoot, and then. It's a whole thing where they get together and then they start competing against each other and it just becomes that family activity. Yeah, and they can do that for a lifelong time. Yes. Uh, you don't see that on the soccer fields or mm -hmm. in the football fields. You know, it, you, you play football in college and then you give it up and you tell your son or daughter, this is how daddy was, mm -hmm. you know, back 20 years ago. But in the shooting sports, you can carry that right through. Yeah. When it comes to the youth programs, um, usually... Where do you suggest they start? Uh, pistol, rifle? I, it's, it's easier for rifle, I think. Um, the, the laws are a little bit easier for parents and, and adults to get into the, the rifle area with their children. But the handgun, we, we get them to go on to handgun. Um, air gun is very, becoming very, very strong, um, mainly because in the international phase, um, it's becoming strong. Um, and again, something that people don't realize is that shooting is an Olympic sport. It's participated by more countries than all but soccer. So it's number two participation of countries in the Olympics is shooting. You know, we're kind of in our own little ball in the United States uh, when it comes to shooting sports. You go to Germany and there's, there's air gun ranges in the pubs in Germany. Um, the shooting sports in Germany is humongous. And, in many, many other countries, it's huge as far as uh, gun ownership and, and uh, the shooting facilities. Yeah, I think a lot of the ne negativity in the media um, hurts a lot of those uh, sports or the shooting sports. Yeah, I think you can you know, address the fact of how, do, how people are, get into the shooting sports um, through pistol permit mm -hmm. classes and so forth. And you know, what it takes to buy a firearm, mm -hmm. um, maybe you can address that. Well, with, with the new law that went in uh, April 4th of uh, 2013, the laws have changed. Um, you do have to have a permit or a long gun certificate now to purchase a firearm. So uh, the first thing you have to do is a safety course. Uh, the safety course is uh, NRA or uh, something similar with an 8 to 10 hour uh, training curriculum. Uh, it goes over uh, the fundamentals of guns, uh, the parts, the actual grip, stance, all that. Once you do that, you take a test, and then you go to the shooting range, do some shooting. Once you get that certificate at the end, when you pass, uh, you apply at your local police department. Once you apply at your local police department, they do a background check, fingerprints, all that. If you clear, you get your temporary permit. Uh, after the temporary permit, uh, it's uh, a, a state permit. You go to the Department of Public Safety and... Uh, pay them and you get your five-year permanent. It, it's kind of a long process, but uh, it's w worth it in the end. And then after that, you can buy long guns, handguns, or in other states where it, it's not like that. You just you show them your driver's license, go in and buy a, a firearm, you know? So we've had a lot of rights taken away here in Connecticut, but you're still able to, you know, exercise your Second Amendment. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, we both agree that um, there's a lot of people out there um, that, have not learned about the shooting sports and learned mm -hmm. about firearms and they have a misconception of what it really takes to get a firearm uh, especially in this state um, where it's very very stringent to, to get a firearm and to own a firearm mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to gun safety classes there's you know tons of gun safety that you have to go through mm -hmm. uh, the whole way through um, but uh, again you know we feel very adamant that Unfortunately, with all those laws and all those restrictions, in Connecticut, the, the crime hasn't gone down. Um, the murder rate hasn't gone down. Mm -hmm. um, all these gun buyback uh, programs doesn't do a bit of good. I mean, New Haven and Hartford, the big cities, um, you know, just... Top 10 in uh, the country <laughs> So <laughs> for violent you know, crimes. <laughs> here we are. Yep. Um, and, and it, you know, what bothers me through all that, too, is that you know, Connecticut was always the heritage of mm -hmm. firearms. I mean, we had four or five of the major firearm manufacturers in Connecticut. You know, my family is over 100 years old in firearms. Mm -hmm. um, and, and all of that has been either frowned upon or taken away from us uh, in this state. And, um, you know, as an old Yankee, um, it just burns me up to know every time uh, a new 
legislator term comes around, um, a little bit of that heritage keeps getting taken away. Yeah, it's a shame how they pushed a lot of the manufacturers out of uh, out of the state. Uh, Marlin, uh, Winchester, um, uh, Savage. You know, uh, we were the manufacturing capital of the world at one time, and, and it's a shame. But um, that's the state we live in. <laughs> this, this is the state we live in. Yeah. Um, we, uh, I think, you know, it's important that that people realize um, that. You know, the people that are in the business, like you and I, um, we're very adamant about having uh, good control over firearms, mm -hmm. um, yet it needs not be restricted um, to the point where it, it discourages people of getting into it. Um, I know I try to talk people, um, and again, especially on the youth side, into the shooting sports mm -hmm. because it's a sport that doesn't have concussions. Um, you never have a concussion in shooting sports. Um, never had any accidents or or any kind of uh, fatalities or mm -hmm. anything at a at a shooting range. Um, and you know, there's nobody ever getting hurt, broken bones or anything like that. Um, so you know, we're always trying to talk new people into getting into it because it really is a, a great sport to be into. I, I agree with you, and, and and I go through that battle every day of talking to people, hey, don't get discouraged. I know it takes a long time. Um, just stick with it. And uh, when you get through the process, it, 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 I've seen people just go, wow, it was worth, worth it to me. You know, I wouldn't give this up for anything. Uh, we've had people from all over the world come because their rights were taken away in their countries that they were in, and they want to see the freedoms that we Law enforcement, and you see a lot of uh, law enforcement um, agencies getting more into the safety aspect. Uh. There's a lot of safety in, in the law enforcement side. There needs to be more training, but then it comes down to money. <laughs> but uh, we've noticed um, from that side, the guys that are using that tool every day, uh, they're taking their own money and doing it on their own. Um, when it comes to uh, training, if, if, if we have a law enforcement military guy who wants training, we usually uh, donate our time and, and do it with them, uh, depending on what they're trying to achieve. Uh, I've donated our time uh, for, to different SWAT teams to help them get up to snuff, uh, especially with what's going on in the world now with active shooters. Fortunately, seeing more of this, but that's the world we live in. Uh, we are at war. These guys are starting to come to our hometowns to do it. and It's a shame, but... Uh, with that being said, we do start, we are seeing more training with that. And uh, that's one of the things that we're doing now more to um, uh, trying to push it out more, getting higher qualified people to, to do these courses. I, I like how they're starting to change this now with uh, the way they're taking over act, run, hide, or fight, I think mm -hmm. it is now. I think that's the saying they're using now, which uh, I'm glad to see. Hopefully it, it keeps going on. That's when it goes to the civilian world. The media doesn't talk about the person that stopped an active shooter. Right. They, they only bring out the people that, uh, hey, there was five people killed today by a shooter. Instead of, there was a guy carrying today concealed and an active shooter showed up and he, the guy took him out. We, we don't hear those stories, but they happen every day too, just like all the other ones. Um, and that's the media for you. You know, it pushes their agenda. You know. Yeah, we're we're finding a lot of the law enforcement and the military because we've been, you know, so active in the military mm -hmm. wars or conflicts mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it. Um, people coming back, um, either retiring or getting out of the military or getting out of law enforcement, mm -hmm. and they're coming back to the ranges and and practicing and training, um, which again. You know, we see them practicing those safety techniques mm -hmm. all the time that they've learned. And I think as civilians, as the transition from military law enforcement over to civilian life, um, you know, they need to be aware of that. And they are. You mm -hmm. know, people are definitely that have permits and have, uh, you know, an interest in it are definitely uh, staying with the training aspect, mm -hmm. which ultimately leads to the safety aspect. You know, a lot of people address the fact, uh, would you rather teach safety uh, with a handgun or a, a shotgun or a rifle? Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter what you use for a firearm. Um, you need to learn how to use it safely. 
Um, and again, you know, we get people that all say, well, my son or daughter has paintballs or they have, uh, they watch video games. Well, doggone it, you need to teach them, you know, safety even with that. And uh, it's probably a good idea to teach them safety with a real firearm uh, mm -hmm. because uh, they'll think of a point paintball as a toy. Mm -hmm. uh, I know growing up uh, in my family, um, I was never allowed to, to aim a water gun mm -hmm. even at anybody. My father always said if you get used to, to pointing a water gun at somebody, when it comes time to handling a real firearm, you're going to have a tendency to point that at the, at the person. Uh, Remington always in high school wanted to, to uh, do paintball and uh, you know we didn't flat out tell him he couldn't but you know it was suggested very strongly that mm -hmm. he probably not I mean you know in the civilian life firearms aren't used for mm -hmm. shooting people mm -hmm. and if you're used to playing paintball uh, you're going to be used to that at some point in time. Agreed um, but I've noticed uh, with the way uh, everything is now in the world I notice a lot of people a lot of people want to get their permit to carry to protect themselves mm -hmm. um, one thing that has been one tool that we've been using uh, that we tried uh, many years to help general dynamics uh, help us is uh, we push the whole simunition round uh, simunition round is uh, you can take your gun uh, you put a different barrel in it no other live round can go into it you put on safety equipment and then you can actually see what it's like to be in a, a situation uh, that is a threat to you. So uh, we have scenarios, we give people scenarios of uh, being robbed or uh, being held at gunpoint and how would you deal with that situation if you were, if you were armed. Uh, and people started seeing how, wow, just because I did a safety course doesn't mean I can go out there and get into a gunfight, which I highly suggest you should never do. Right. But if you get to that point where there's no other alternative to protect your life is to get into that situation, which it, it could happen, uh, how would you react in that situation? So uh, I used it in the military, and I was like, wow, this is a great tool because it gives you that adrenaline dump and everything, and then it makes you really start to think under pressure. And we noticed uh, with people, when we started doing that, uh, their mistakes was just shoot everything. And then we started noticing that they started focusing more and trying to think their way out of the situations. And then all of a sudden to where they, they would not even be in those situations at all because they started getting out of that adrenaline dump and that tunnel vision and all that and then being able to work through that situation without taking someone's life or doing what they had to do to protect their life or, or someone else's. So uh, my suggestion after a safety course, I think you should definitely do more and more training. Uh, there's plenty of courses out there. There's plenty of uh, people teaching different stuff. Just make sure you look at who's teaching you, what their background is, where they come from. Um, but uh, it's an excellent tool looking at the UTM or simunition rounds. Um, but it goes back to that pointing a gun at somebody, mm -hmm. you know. But that's after safety, and um, you're going to get a firearm for self-defense. Because uh, you have to be aware of where your muzzle's pointing and what can possibly happen if you miss that person. Like in uh, New York, uh, in Times Square, I think five police officers, they shot 60-something rounds, and they didn't hit the one guy that was, <laughs> had the firearm. So it goes back to training again. So sure. that's something uh, that should be looked at, too, on top of safety. You know, why are you buying a firearm? Why are you getting into it? Is it for sports, or is it for protection, or is it you're a collector? We have uh, at, at the range a lot of uh, ex-military uh, people that come and, and put on courses, and it's amazing. Uh, and they're teaching people that have been in the sports for 20 years mm -hmm. and have been, you know, decorated in the military and law enforcement. And they always start the courses with a with a safety lecture mm -hmm. and, and talk about safety. And it's it's just drilled into you constantly. Um, you know, I think again, a lot of people that aren't into firearms at all, um, they think that people just you know take it nonchalantly. Um, and they're not. I mean, gun owners are resp the most responsible people uh, on the face of the earth. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, they, uh, they're, they're like race car drivers. Yep. Uh, they know that they have uh, a potentially dangerous uh, weapon in mm -hmm. their hands, um, and they, you know, won't, won't have anything to do with it. Um, they, they use it correctly. They use it responsibly. Are there accidents? 
sure there's accidents, mm -hmm. but um, when you come down to it, 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 it had, the accident is usually an outside um, force. It's mm -hmm. not the actual uh, gun owner and not the actual uh, gun that the owner is handling. There's some other outside activity that uh, is responsible for it. So. And I've seen situations like that. Um, we're shooting on a range, and someone was happened to be hiking. <laughs> and as we're shooting, the guy comes up and over the berm. Hey, guys. Yeah. Fortunately, he didn't get injured, but it's just situations like some people are not aware of their surroundings, and why would you go past signs and fences saying, shooting range. You were talking about safety. Uh, one thing I noticed, uh, even if I pick up a toy gun, I always put, index my finger on, on the firearm. Sure. And that's just been instilled in me like you were talking about. And it, and it started at a young age for me too. And uh, never had an accident or anything like that or a negligent discharge or none of that. Yeah, I think, you know, all of us that have been in the sports uh, have never, I mean, none of us have can testify to an accident that's, you know, ever happened to us. Uh, um, I know that, you know, I give, uh, you know, 50, 100 safety lectures in a year. Um, you know, I've been doing it for 40 years. Um, that's a heck of a lot of uh, safety yes. lectures yes, that I've is. given. <laughs> um, so it's certainly drilled into my mind. Um, it's drilled, you know, all of our juniors, whether they've been in the program one year or they've been in it for, you know, 15 years, they still get the safety lecture right at the beginning, um, and it's just something that you need to hear over and over and over again. In, in closing, um, with this whole safety concept is, um, I want people to realize that um, there are community activities, community uh, facilities, community um, programs. Uh, Wallingford Adult Ed right here uh, in town offers a basic pistol marksmanship program. Um, there are community programs that you can go to and learn about firearm safety. It may not be for you, but it's kind of like learning to eat broccoli or learning to swim or anything else in life. Um, you need to try it once. And um, I, I beg people that are out there in the, in the listening area um, to give it a chance and see how you like it. And um, not listen to the pol political aspect of it, um, not listen to the media aspect of it, but just try it on your own um, and see if it, it's something that you like um, and that there's all kinds of avenues um, that can take you, whether it's through defense aspect, whether it's through the sport aspect, whether it's through competition, whether it's through gun collecting. Um, there's all kinds of aspects that, that knowledgeable people can take you to uh, in the shooting world. And, and just give it a chance. Um, learn the gun safety first. Give it a, a chance and then uh, decide for yourself one way or the other. That's, that's the main thing that I would like to get through uh, with our conversation here this evening. Yeah, you couldn't have said it any better. Um, think for yourself. Try it out. See what you like and, and uh, then make your decision. I, I agree with you totally on that. So uh, I guess we're out of time. So uh, thank you for joining us. And um, my name is Douglas Odisho. I'm the owner of Delta Arson. This is David Lyman, uh, owner of Blue, Trail Blue Trails. Thank you for joining us tonight. I, I love uh, the shooting sports and, and what it's done for me. Um, and I'd like to open up to other people, and that's why you and I both do what we do.